All right. So today we're going to keep going along uh, with poetry. We're going to dive a little bit more into the language that's used um, and try to start understanding the poet in a different way. So today we're going to talk about tone, mood, and voice. Um, these are the things that help us understand a whole bunch about who the poet is, what they're trying to tell us, and what they want us to take away from their poem. So let's start with tone and mood. I think these are the easy ones. Sometimes students mix these up. So let's be clear about what they actually mean. Okay. Tone has to do more with attitude. Okay. And mood has to do with feelings, right? If someone says you're taking a tone with me, they don't mean you have necessarily like interesting feelings. They have, they're talking about what's coming out of your mouth, right? Um, we can express tone in different ways using the same words, right? If your mom says to you, um, you know, Hey, can you come over here? That means one thing, right? But if she uses those same words and said, hey, can you come over here? That means something else, right? You hear it in the tone. You go, uh oh, oh, something's happening, right? So tone, um, when we when we listen and speak to one another, we can hear tone from inflection like I just did. But in poetry, we have to start paying attention to the words used to understand the tone that's being conveyed, okay? Because you can't always hear the poet's voice. You have to listen to what words are they using to signal their tone, right? Um, do they have like a happy attitude? Are they angry? Are they, you know, in love? And so that's coming through their tone, okay? Now, mood is the feeling that you're supposed to get from the, the, um, the poet in this case. So this is um, the atmosphere that the writer is trying to create for you. So you're supposed to pick up on like the feeling of it, like, oh, this is kind of spooky or like, oh, this is real romantic, right? Like they can create that stuff through the words that they use, um, the images that they put into your head with the, with the, the way they're describing something, okay? So tone has to do with attitude. Mood has to do with the feeling of it, okay? These are the easy ones. Now, in the past, you may have heard of voice being taught like this. Voice is the emotion that the author uses in writing. It's happy or mad or tired or embarrassed. This is a super elementary way of understanding voice, okay? So now that we're in middle school, we need to start pivoting away from that and understanding voice in a deeper, more complex way because it is incredibly deep and complex. So we're going to get rid of this one. And instead, I want you guys to check this out. So this chart looks a little crazy at first. Um, I'll explain it. So voice, an author's voice or a poet's voice is created through the emotions that they use, like that elementary school poster showed you, but also the tone or the attitude, which we just discussed, and the point of view, which we're going to get to tomorrow. Okay. So all three of these help us understand an author's voice. These three, the emotions, the tone, and the point of view are built with the words or the word choice that the poet or author chooses. Okay. So specific words, help us understand what emotions they're feeling, the tone that they're conveying, and their point of view, their perspective. And these three help us pick up on authorial voice or the author's voice, the poet's voice. When I talk about poet's voice, I'm talking about, is it comical or depressed? Is it formal or informal, light or serious, positive or negative, persuasive or argumentative? Voice can take a lot of different forms, okay? It doesn't have to be any of those. It could be a couple of those at once, all right? Voice can look a lot of different ways. But the key thing to remember is that it's built using emotions, tone, and point of view, okay? Now, we haven't covered point of view yet, but since we talked about Langston Hughes last week, we're going to glance real quickly at a poem of his. Since you already know a little bit about his point of view in life, this should help you, okay? But I want you to pay attention to his tone and the emotions, right? Remember, these two are established through the words he chooses, and we're trying to pick up on his voice, okay? So let's take a look at a very short poem by the great Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? 
So even if we don't understand the meaning of this yet, and we're not going to get into this, I'm going to revisit this poem another day and we're going to get into the meaning, but I just want you to touch on the tone and like the feeling of it, the mood of it, and then the emotions behind it. Just looking at the words he's using, how can we start to pick up on these things? Look at the words he chooses. Fester. If you had a wound on your arm, that's what he's talking about here, and it was festering, it's getting like full of pus and nasty blood and like it stinks. It's horrible, right? He's talking about rotten meat stinking. He's talking about something down here, syrupy sweet, but he's talking about it crusting over, right? None of these are positive things, right? What is this all referring to? What happens to a dream deferred? Deferred in this case means delayed, so a dream put on hold. All these negative things, right? And then he talks about maybe it sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? If we go back to our little chart here, and just looking at the word choice that he's using, what can you pick up from this poem by Langston Hughes? Is he happy? Is he sad? Is he angry? You have to use your word choice to figure these things out. And then as you do, you start to hear his voice. That's the whole idea here with voice is that um, we're listening very closely to the words they use because we can't hear the inflection of their voice, right? We can't hear that thing where mama might, you know, get over here that tone, right? We can't hear the inflection. We have to listen to just words. We're trying to hear the voice of the author through their words. So just looking at that, I know that was not a comical poem, right? His voice was not comical. His voice was not positive, right? It was not light. Okay. So we're starting to hear the author's voice. So we're going to try that again with Denise Froman's poem that we listened to yesterday, Accents. I want you to do the same thing. And this should be a little easier because she's performing it live. You do get to hear her inflection, right? You get to see her facial expressions. So we're going to try that now. And then later today, you're going to do it with a written poem. Okay. So it's even further removed. You can't hear the poet's voice. You can't see their face. You're going to have to rely solely on word choice like we just did with Langston Hughes's poem. Okay, so go ahead and scroll down and start listening to Denise Froman's poem Accents again, this time listening for her voice.